Don't tell me you can't love. Because if Christ is in you, you'll have so much love, you'll just be amazed. You may even love the unlovely. You may forgive the unforgivable. You may even be willing to forget. Forget the injuries that have been done to poor you. You may actually be willing to forget and to start looking at somebody who has injured you with new loving eyes. Have you ever had an enemy, by the way? I mean, ever had a serious enemy? Well, I'm glad for some of you I obviously haven't, but some of you have. I've had an enemy for over 20 years. I have no idea why he's an enemy to me. We've never worked together. We do come from the same hemisphere, but we've never worked together. He's a leader in our general conference. And for 20 years he has roamed around the world and especially North America. And I keep hearing that comes back to me some people love you so much they tell you the bad things they hear about you. <laughs> Just to not make your day better. And so many of my well-intentioned friends around the country have called me and said, oh, this guy made this statement about you. And I go, oh! And God says, hey, 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 your ways are not my ways. And God has forbidden me for 20 years to say one word about this guy, even though I hear these stories that he's saying about me, and I just go, <laughs> I'm not permitted to utter one word as God teaches me that his ways are not my ways. Anyway, last year, some friends of mine in Southern California Whenever I have a seminar in their church, they invite me to stay in their house. So I've known them for many years. Lovely couple. And their tradition is that whenever I'm staying with them for the weekend, they put on a dinner party for me on Saturday night. I love a formally set table, you know. I love to sit down where it's set with very special napkins and and dinnerware and, and cutlery. I just enjoy that so much. And this woman has a gift of setting her table so beautifully, you'd think you're in an exquisite restaurant. And just to walk in and see her table, it's just such an uplifting experience. And she usually has about a dozen people to dinner when I'm there, and I'm the guest of honour every time. And I'm, so, I'm just so honoured to be on the receiving end of all this love. And, and it just lifts me up. And anyway, on this particular weekend, my, hosts, my hostess said to me, we have a great surprise for you tomorrow night. <laughs> oh, I said, fantastic. <laughs> oh, yes, she said, we have a special guest. <laughs> You're going to enjoy this so much because he even comes from the same section of the world as you. Oh, I said, fantastic, you know. I was that excited. They know nothing about my relationship with this man, fortunately. And I've never told them, even now. <laughs> anyway, uh, I was held up at the church, big surprise, and I didn't get to the house till 8 o'clock. They were all waiting for me, they were all seated at the table, I walked in. And here's my big surprise sitting at the other end of the table. <laughs> grinning like a Cheshire cat, <laughs> enjoying the moment immensely. And I glanced up and I said, okay, <laughs> this is my big surprise. So I looked up briefly and said to God, what are you doing to me? <laughs> anyway, I walked over and we shook hands. We can fake it as well as anybody. <laughs> and we faked a nice warm greeting. And I sat down at the opposite end of the table. I'm the only person in the room who knows 
the pain that this man is in. The agony of his personal circumstances, things that he'd just been through. If it was me, I'd be dying. And he's sitting there acting tough. I'm fully aware of the most traumatic events, and I won't share them with you, but traumatic things that have happened in his life. And in the middle of dinner, he puts his knife and fork down and he starts weeping. He cannot handle the emotional pain that he's going through. I'm the only one sitting there who knows why he's weeping. And I remained, of course, super glued to my seat. And God came through the Spirit and said, Knock, knock. I said, I'm not home. <laughs> I know God well enough by now that I don't want to hear this. <laughs> and God says, he's in a lot of pain. I said, yes, he is. <laughs> and God says, you know why he's in a lot of pain. I said, yes, I do. <laughs> and God says, do you realize that you're the only person sitting here who the other people are so intimidated? This is a world leader. They have no idea how to handle this. They're embarrassed to death. And God says to me, you're the only person here who could actually minister to this man at this moment. I said, but God, he would never permit me to minister to him. And God says, well, whether you think that or not, I'm choosing you. I said, no! God says, get up out of your seat. I want to tell you, that super glue was so strong. I couldn't budge and God kept prodding me, get up out of your seat and go to this man. Amen. Well, you know, God is capable of bringing such conviction upon you that if you don't respond, you're going to start weeping. I don't think I've done a harder thing in all my life. I forced myself because no one's moving and he's just weeping and weeping. I forced myself to stand up and I walked over and stood behind him. And I leaned forward and put my hands on his shoulders. And I leaned over and whispered in his ear because I didn't want to embarrass him. To embarrass him, I said, God has just impressed me that he wants to minister to you through me. Amen. Amen. I hope that's okay. I'm giving him a chance to back out of this now. Of course, I'm going to look silly if he backs out of it, but looking silly for God is not as bad as just looking silly, is it? <laughs> <laughs> so I stand there because he hasn't said anything and he finally turns around through his tears and he says to me, please pray for me right now. So I knelt down beside him, I put my arms around him and a surge of compassion, wasn't me, I'd like to kick him in the pants, you know, <laughs> a surge of compassion flowed through me Amen. as I realized how horrible it must be to spend your life just focused on putting someone else down and not keeping your eyes on Jesus Christ. Right. And then I began to realize he's just been through these crises in his life. He's lost everything in life precious to him. And he may not even be spiritually fortified to, halt, to handle it. And I began to realize why God wanted me to minister to this guy. And he just gave me a precious prayer for this man. And as I prayed, I could feel the Holy Spirit restoring him and strengthening him. Anyway, I finished praying. I stood up and he stood up and we hugged each other. Amen. And he said to me, you have no idea what this means to me. I said, I think I have a very good idea because I know what it means to me. And I said to him very quietly, I hope this means that we could put aside whatever differences there are and we could be brothers together 
for Christ's sake and for the church's sake. <coughs> and he just looked at me and he said, I would like to do that. I said, thank you, Lord. Amen. And to this day, and he's gone through some even tougher times more recently, retired now, but to this day, our relationship is sweet. Amen. And I walked back to my seat and the Holy Spirit said, I mean, that wasn't so hard, was it? <laughs> And I realized more than ever that when the Spirit of God is in you, the compassion of God is in you, and you can even love your greatest enemy. Right. And I give God the glory for that because my intentions were far different from God's. But God used the most reluctant witness to come and minister to a man who's hated him for 20 years. And out of it came a love relationship. I looked up and I said to God, you are too much. <laughs> you are too much. You can take the most hopeless circumstances and you turn them around to your own advantage. What a God we serve, huh? What a God we serve.